Okay. So you remember last time we were playing around with Netcat, yes? Yes. Okay. So let's just go back to that for a second. Um, find out what your IP address is, and I'll find out what mine is. Since I'm on Mac, I'm looking for E and zero. I'm pretty sure it starts with a 92 though. There we go. So no, E and one. Ian one, there we go. That's what I am, and yours should be WLAN zero on Linux. So I have config. Yeah. Okay, good. And yours is one nine two dot one six eight dot seven dot one seven five. I think that's the same thing it was the other day. And mine is 192.168.5.25, which is also the same thing it was the other day. So I'm going to ping you. I can reach you. Um, so you go ahead and do nc-l like you were doing there. And what port are you going to put it on? 4000 would probably be okay. All right. So that's what you're doing. So you're running a server. I'm not going to run the server. I'm going to run the client. So I'm going to connect to you at 192.168.7.175. Okay. So basically, um, whoops, I didn't tell what port, port 4000. Okay. So I'm typing, hello, Brianna. You receive it. You type back. I receive it. Great. Okay. So let's cancel that. Um, and I'm going to start up a listener this time, and you you keep the listener as well, because we're going to do the same thing, but on I'm going to do it on my computer, you're going to do it on your computer, okay? All right. So. So back to listening mode. Yeah. So go back to listening mode. List on port four thousand. That's great. Okay. So we're both listening. Now instead of me talking to your computer and you talking to my computer, we're just going to simplify this by talking to our own computers, um, so that I can record it. <laughs> But if you go to HTTP colon slash slash, and I don't even think you got to type all that in, you just type in localhost colon 4000. So your computer is acting as a server right now, and it's serving on port 4000. Now you're going to open up a listener, okay? And look what happens. This is HTTP right here. So what it is, is it's a specific format that the one computer sends to the other. So it has this git slash http slash 1.1. So what this is saying is the verb of what, what action to take, the resource, which in this case is just the root resource. This is the default resource. Okay. And then this is the protocol. So it's HTTP protocol version 1.1. Okay. And there are actually a lot of protocols that look just like HTTP. Um, this is called MIME format. It's like multimedia internet or mul media internet multi extension or something like that. I'll just Wikipedia it real quick. <laughs> MIME. Except my internet's busted, so I can't. Okay, never mind. Anyway, so aside from the first line here that defines um, MIME, M I M E. Yeah. Not, not mine. So it's you're looking that up on your computer. But take a look at this real quick. So it's all key value pairs. So there's a key, and then there's a colon, and a space, and then a value. So the key is host, the value is localhost colon 4000. Right? Okay. The key is connection, the value is keep alive. The key is accept, the value is these bunch of things. So uh, these have various meanings. The only one that's really required is, I think, this host one. I think if you don't specify connection, it defaults to close. If you don't specify accept, it just defaults to anything. If you don't specify user agent, it doesn't matter. Um, user agent is like what the browser is. All browsers report themselves to be Mozilla, no matter what they are. 
because back in the 1990s, people were doing the right thing and not allowing Internet Explorer to connect to sites because it wasn't standards compliant. And they were like, well, we're only serving Mozilla sites here because <laughs> that's the standard we follow. And then Microsoft started adding Mozilla to there. So if you were to connect with a browser that doesn't have Mozilla in it to like some site that was built in the 1990s and never updated, it very well might say, you need to be using Mozilla in order to use this site. Because it was like the first browser engine. Um, anyway, so the user agent's kind of confusing because it says a bunch of stuff that may or may not be true. But it's meant to let the server know what kind of page it should send. Like when you know the user agent's Chrome, you might just expect your web page to work exactly the way you programmed it. But if you see that it's Internet Explorer, then you might want to send a header that says, hey, upgrade to Chrome frame. And because um, you can install a plugin in Internet Explorer that will make it behave properly. It's called Chrome frame. Okay. Anyway, so generally that's frowned upon to to use the user agent to provide special features but sometimes it makes sense like in the case of Chrome Frame. Um, and then these accept encoding language char set I won't go into that right now but the basics are um, these these first ones right here All right let me see if this is timed out yet no it hasn't thank goodness okay so and then I need to respond to this request with with something to let the browser know that it it has something it can do you need to start your server again you quit it yeah. or it quit it quit yeah so just start the server again and then hit refresh so just hit up hit enter there you go now you're listening in go ahead and hit refresh okay so this is the message that the browser sent to us this is just what happens like when you connect to google.com that's what the google.com server sees and then we need to respond to it and tell it you know it says it wants to get something and we need to tell it okay I'll get that for you so um, since I'm not able to Google will you Google cool AJ86 uh, HTTP examples okay try oh let me see, now I'm connected to my 3G, maybe I'll be able to do this. Yeah. Yep, yep, go to that. And then go to um, the multi-part form one, right there, yep. And then uh, open up response.raw, that one right there, response. Now don't drag it into the terminal. I didn't mean to. Oh, okay. Uh, delete, yeah, delete all that. Boop. All the way. Keep on deleting. Oh, you can't delete it? Yeah. Oh, oops. Oh, well. Well, you can just cancel and try again. So, cancel, try again, and then go back to the browser here, hit refresh. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I just forget this format. But we can type this out by hand. So, we're both going to type it out by hand. Go back to that page. So, it's HTTP slash 1.1200 OK. What this means is I'm responding back and I'm saying, yes, I am protocol HTTP 1.1. 200 is the code that means um, that means everything went fine, like I was able to do what you asked me to do. And then OK is a message. It could be any message. It could be snarfblat. doesn't matter. But generally, it's OK. That's the standard message for 200. And then we could say... Uh, we'd need to tell it um, content type and then give it, uh, let's do text plain, text slash plain, or we could do text slash HTML, but we're not actually going to put HTML. But that doesn't matter about that. They, that, yeah, that one, we're just going to ignore that line because that's not something that we need. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, let's see, we want a connection close would be appropriate. And it doesn't matter which order you put these in. Oh, and also another header. So in a request header, you're required to have host. And I think that's the only header you're actually required to have. 
is the host one. And a response header, you're required to have date, and I believe you're required to have content length. Or you could tell it that it's chunked, but that is more work than what I want to do right now. Um, so then the date needs to be in this format. Let's see, Monday, uh, was it the 11th of March 2013? March 11th, yep, okay. 2013, and then we'll just make up a time because I don't want to convert to GMT. So we'll just say that it's the. Let's say that it's 9.38. Well, I guess we could put, instead of GMT, we can probably put MST, and that'll probably work. But I don't know. It won't matter because our server, well, our the browser will be okay. But let's, I don't know what the format is. Let's just put GMT because I know that's correct. It's usually sent in GMT, which is the standard time. Okay, and the last thing is content length. And in order to know what the content length is, um, we just need to be able to count on our fingers the message we're going to send back. So we'll send back the message hi, which is H I exclamation, and then a new line. So that would be four is going to be our content length. Okay, so be four, and then. We put enter and then enter again. So now we're done with the header. And now we type back hi and then hit enter. Okay, now in the browser, you should get the message. Hi. Mm hmm. Yep. So we just did a manual web server. Yep. Okay. So we just did the work that a web server is required to do in order to talk to a browser. That's neat. So HTTP is an extremely simplistic protocol um, that actually works really well. It's one of the few protocols that, despite being designed in the 90s, or perhaps earlier than that, I'm not sure exactly when it originated, um, but it's actually a, a protocol worth using. It's not complicated. You can you can debug it by hand. Um, yeah. So so the difference between what we did the other day and today is just these headers. The just the standard message format of saying this is the type of data I'm sending you, and this is you know, how you can understand that data. Make sense? Yep. Cool. Um, so, in Node, we don't need to parse all of these headers ourselves because it already has a library that handles all that. So, let's just make the same program again that we you know that instead of us doing it as humans the program will do it so let's just call this HTTP test.js and start off with the customary function blob use strict var HTTP equals require HTTP and then HTTP I think it's dot create server and then just like we had the handle connection for the TCP, we're going to have one for the HTTP. So there will be request and response. And let's see, we'll put this on port 4000 also. Why doesn't it like 
what I'm doing. That's on. Oh, I need to make my um, put my JS hint RC back in place. I was doing a tutorial on JS hint, and I uh, removed it. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the response headers. I'm just going to console.log them. So you won't see these in plain text format. You'll see them as a JavaScript object. So it'll still be key value pair, but everything will be lowercase and whatnot. Um, mute that. And then with the response, I will just set header content type text plain char set equals utf8 and so this right here is a standard mime type this text plain and then it's also standard to say what char set your um, data is in if it's a text type of data and utf8 is just the international standard for text so you could be writing in Chinese or whatever language and it would be able to represent all those characters because in the early days computers could only have 255 unique characters so the alphabet with numbers uppercase and lowercase is like 62 characters and then you put in your punctuation now you're up to like 70 a keyboard on it has 101 keys a standard keyboard from the 1980s or so <clears throat> and each one of those has um, you know a function that it does but of course I mean, if you're writing in just plain English with a couple of those accent characters like the E with an accent or whatever like you have in Spanish that works okay but uh, it doesn't work okay for when you're trying to write in Chinese or diverse languages and so UTF-8 is just um, a more complex but complete way to describe characters. So then I'll do response.write hi and then I'll do response.end and I don't need to set the content length because when I do my write it's going to figure out what the content length is automatically. Um, Actually, I think it's going to set it out, send it out as chunked. So the other, if you don't specify content length, you can specify chunked, and then every time you send a chunk, before you send the chunk, you send how many bytes that chunk is. So like the message high. Well, not really. It's it's actually a lot simpler because if I want to find out what the content length is I have to know the entire message that I'm going to send before I send it right but if I chunk it out then I can just be like oh I know that this is three characters so I'm gonna send out the number three and then I'm gonna send out the three characters and then I send out the the uh, number zero or a new line and then the number zero and so it knows when I see a new line in the number zero then it's over transmissions complete for that chunk and then it looks for the next chunk. Actually, I don't even think, it doesn't have the number zero at the end. It just has the number that it's going to be, then a new line, then the message, then another new line, and then the number again. Or two new lines and then the number again. Something like that. But it's actually a lot simpler because it doesn't have to know ahead of time how many bytes it's going to be. Okay, so I think you're pretty much caught up with what I've got. Um, that should be a angle bracket, not a square. Wait, that is an angle bracket, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you strict. You spelled nope. it wrong. Yeah. There we go. Um, and we'll take a look at those other things in a minute, but I think you're good for now.
So let's go ahead and try it. I think yours is going to work. So we'll run this node HTTP test. Add listener only takes instance of function. Oh, I know what I did wrong here. Server dot listen. This should be 4000 and then on listening another function so now I'm telling you listen on port 4000 and when you've started listening call this on listening listener or call back and then just print out server running at and then whatever the address of the server is. Okay, so I'll teach you another quick trick, totally unrelated. Open up uh, a listener again. Actually, don't open up a listener. Let me, I'll open up a listener. I'm going to open it up on port uh, 5000. And I'm going to direct in my file, which is my JS hint RC. Okay, now I want you to NC um, 192168 dot five dot two five I think is what I am but don't hit enter yet all right that's what you are yeah I am dot five dot two five okay and then space five thousand for the port number so what you're doing is this one nine two dot one six eight dot five dot two five port five thousand and then direct that to this file dot js hint rc so the carrot and then tilde you did not do that right. Space tilde slash dot js hint rc. Okay, now I'm going to hit enter. Now you hit enter. Boom. So now we just did a poor man's network copy. So I just copied this file. Um, whoops. Nope, I lied. Maybe I didn't. Let's do do cat tilde slash dot js hint rc dot js hint. There we go. Just hit js hit tab. You type too much. Tab, tab. Or type the whole thing, whatever. Okay, hit enter. Okay, so that did not work. I think I might have hit it before. I, I did the wrong thing here. Okay. I started the server, but then I also had the client. And yeah, anyway, so you go ahead and do the same thing again. I just ran the command on my computer and it captured the connection. That one. That one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, cat, your JS hint RC, you should see that it exists. Yes. Okay, cool. So that is poor man's file copy. As you can use netcat on two computers and say, one, give it the um, this caret that says read from this file, and the other, give it the other carrot that says read to this file. Okay. And so, yeah, that's what we just did. Now, when you go back and you open up your HTTP test and you hit save, now you shouldn't see those error markers because your JS hint will be set up the same as mine. Oh, you misspelled function up top. So there's a good reason for all the errors in yours. There's probably typos. There we go. All right, now save again. See if it uh, takes away all your error markers. Give me more. Um, all right, what am I doing wrong here? I'm gonna pause this again. So now that you got your typos fixed and you're at the same place that I am, 
Let's go ahead and I'll do colon WQ to write and save. And then I'll clear to get rid of some of this other stuff. And now node HTTP test. Right? And I'll hit enter. This is what I get. Hit tab. Don't type so much. There you go. Good. Remember, typing is the number one reason for typos. Actually, Vim has a little plug-in mode where you don't even have to type out things like function. You can just hit F and hit tab, and it'll assume that you meant function and like whatever variables you have. You can just like hit tab, and it will cycle through the ones that start with that letter. But I don't use that plug-in for some reason. I probably should start doing it. Then I'd have fewer typos as well. Anyway, that'll be another lesson for another day. Right. But now, um, if we hit the refresh button, boom we should see all of the headers and we should see our same message let's go ahead and change our message so i'm going to hit control c to end that server and then hit up a couple times so i can get back into edit it let's change this message to hello uh, world because that is very appropriate and then i did colon wq to save and quit now I'm running my server again and then refresh. Okay, so now we're positive that it wasn't just some, you know, that it that it didn't work and it just left the thing there. We know because it changed that it actually did work. So you go ahead and try on your side. You're not running your server. Hit up. Hit up. Yep, there you go. Boom, enter. Okay, so now you're running your server. Go ahead and hit refresh. Boom. Okay, so you can see the, the, the data is the same as it was before, but now we're just looking at it in the, the JavaScript format, the JSON format. Or it's not actually quite JSON, but close enough. Anyway, um, and what you'll notice is there's actually two requests that happened here. So let's look and see what those different requests were. Um, so let's do console.log, go back in there, and console.log um, I think there's version, I'm not sure about that, I wish I could Google it. I think it's request that version. It might be request HTTP version. I'll try both just to see. But it doesn't much matter. Okay. So now we'll run this again. Hit refresh. Uh, okay. And it was request.http version. So I'm just prefixing the HTTP slash because that's what it really looks like. But anyway, so run it, refresh. Okay, so now we can see this was the first request. Whoops. Normally I'd have my phone on silent, but since the Comcast guy is going to call me back, I don't. That way I know. Um, and then the second request is for favicon. And favicon is the little thing that shows up right here in your browser, where it shows you like the icon for the website. Okay. So when a browser makes a request, as soon as the first request succeeds, which is the, the initial get for whatever resource, like you know, if you're just visiting the home page, if you're just going to google.com, then you're getting slash. If you're going to like google.com slash mail, then it would be slash mail. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So like if I do localhost slash mail, then boom, it also gets, you know, it does slash mail. So whatever this thing is after the name. And normally it would be on port 80, so it would be colon 80, except you don't need to type that in because that's the standard port. 
You only need to type in the port number when it's a non-standard port. Like 4000? Yeah. So any port other than 80 or I think it's 443 is the port that you use for like a bank or something, the secure port. But we're not going to play with that right now. So anyway, um, the next request a browser always tries to get is favicon.ico. And that can just be, it can either be an actual ICO type file, which is not something I'm going to explain right now, or it can just be a PNG. And it's it'll be like, um, I think the standard resolution for it is 16 by 16. Okay. But so you just make a little, an icon as a PNG file that's 16 by 16, and you put it wherever your server is serving and it'll come up with that. So to, to demonstrate this, we'll take the next step. So we'll go from just using Node's HTTP server to using Connect. Okay. Which is uh, something that makes lots of things lots easier. But I just wanted you to see, you know, what this looks like in Node. Um, so all this stuff is parsed and Node does magic with it so that you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so actually I'm just going to copy this file, HTTP test, to connect test. Oops. Pretend like I didn't do that. Pretend like I did this. I'm always telling people why you should not use CP because it's bad. You should always use rsync-a. Okay. Do you... Give me a moment. I don't think I copied that completely now. Okay. Oh. Tab. There you go. Too much typing. There we go. Good. Tab, tab, tab. All the things. All right. So now I'm going to change this from HTTP to connect. I'm going to change this here also to connect. And so here's the here's the deal. With HTTP, with that module, you only have one handle connection. Um, and then that has to be like your entire application. So connect is just an abstraction so that you can have lots of different handlers of different types. So the nomenclature is a little bit different too. With connect, it's generally called app, not called server. Um, and there's a reason for that. I don't know what that reason is entirely, but So, here I'm going to have a logger. Whoops. And so, for every request, I'm going to log stuff about the request and the response. And then next is um, a method that's or a function that's provided by connect because normally what will happen is when it calls this function it'll wait until you have ended the response before it completes okay so with connect if I have a function where I'm not ending the response then it'll just sit and it'll hang there forever and it will never end so that's what the next is for. The next is to let it know, like, I'm not actually ever going to end the response. I want you to continue doing things. So when you're doing something like a logger or something that just modifies headers, then you use next so that it knows that the purpose of this function is not to handle the request entirely. It's to modify it or to log it or something of that nature. And sometimes you even want to wait to call next until you've done a particular thing. Like maybe you're not going to handle the request, but you're going to see if the request had a like a login username and password, and you're going to look that up in a database or something. And then you would call next after you've figured out whether or not the user was logged in. But in this case, we're just logging stuff. 
So we're just going to log it to the screen. We're not doing anything else. We're immediately calling next so that then it will go to the next thing in the stack. And um, I also want to use connects favicon module. And I also want to use connects static module. And I'll explain what these are in just a moment. But basically for really common tasks, connect already has some stuff built in. So favicon, if you don't give it a favicon, like I could give it a path to like from here, images, logo.png, and it would use that as the favicon if I had one of those. If I supply nothing, it just puts out a generic favicon. Like that one. Um, not, well, you'll see in just a second. It's it, it puts out the connect logo. But that, that's nice because then the web server doesn't have to keep on requesting that over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again every time. Anyway, um, so the logger, we're just doing the same thing that we did before. But then because we're calling next, it'll go to favicon, which means that if it's requesting a favicon, if it you know it's looking for slash favicon.ico, then this module will handle it. And inside, it's just testing to see if that's the, the URL. So we have the request URL like that we're logging right here. So the favicon module just checks to see if that URL is slash favicon.ico and then it handles it. If not, it calls next. When it calls next, it drops down to the next thing, which is static. Now static, we actually do need to give this a parameter. Um, and this is just saying the current folder, the dot slash is. So what this is saying is just look in the current folder to see if it's a file that it's that's being requested. And if it's a file that's being requested, then the static handler is just going to read in the file and then spit it out to the server. Does that or the, to the browser? Does that make sense? Yeah. That looked like a no. Ask me a question. Ask you a question? Yeah, clarify. You can't just tell me, yes, I understand, but you don't understand. If you don't understand, you need to say, no, I don't understand, and then you need to ask me a question. That's how this works. This does not work with you saying, yes, I understand, when you have this confused look on your face. So what is your question? What does make sense? Breathing loudly isn't a question. <laughs> It can be used in the right context. No, I need a real question, one that I can answer. What doesn't make sense? Well, honestly, my mind was not entirely there because I'm behind and I haven't just been that quick yet. Well, don't worry about it. You get there. All right, I'll just pause this with static the question is that it's unclear what static means so so there's two types of ways that well there's a couple different ways what web servers work right one of them is it just serves a file right so like I have a file I want to give you a file yeah. right that the original web servers that's what they did they were document servers so there was a file called index.html and that was the, the home page right and there was a file called um, uh, contact.html and that file is what you were viewing right so your web server you go to you know like back in the old olden days you go to some example.com slash contact.html and that is a file so that's the, that's called the static file serving right whereas dynamic content is where Every time you visit the page, we do something maybe a little bit differently. Like, for example, just to make this a, a good uh, measure of, of what dynamic content means, we can just add here um, new date dot to string, and we could put it in some date format that makes sense to us. Um, how about this to ISO string? ISO is International Standards Organization. They have specified the way that computers should represent date and time. All right. So this 
this we create a new date object and I'm just surrounding it in parens so I don't have to do like var d equals new date and then do d dot to string yada yada I'm just saying like create it right here and now and then pretend like it's a thing um, well it actually becomes the date object that we want anyway so dot to iso string is a method that's on a date object that only date objects have to string like everything has everything will turn into some sort of string representation but date strings specifically can become uh, iso formatted because yeah anyway um, and this gets a little bit more complex and complete or robust maybe would be a better word but if we want to have something that's changing all the time like every time we view it or depending on like what user is logged in those are all dynamic resources you know like when you're on Gmail and you get to see what your mail is well it's going to load the Gmail app which is a bunch of files then that app runs and it goes and gets your mail make sense yeah yeah um, so that that's called an API but we won't really get into that today this is this is kind of the extent of what we're doing today right here so we're gonna log it no matter what it is then that's always gonna next it then we're gonna favicon it if it's looking for the favicon it's just gonna get the generic one that connect provides otherwise it's gonna next it if it next it then it's going to go to static static is gonna check to see if the thing that you're requesting is a file and then if it's not it's gonna next it and then at that point if it's on slash let's just let's do uh, this is fine this is fine we'll just leave it like this so if it's if we're just requesting slash uh, we should we should actually put something here let's call this slash hello so that this this example will make more sense because otherwise I think everything will get handled I don't know it'll be interesting to try we'll, we'll check it out and see so if it's slash hello then it's gonna it's gonna have our handle index function that spits out hello world with the date and then anything else gets caught by the default handler which is the error handler the 404 the page not found handler okay. so you'll see what that is in just a second so let's go ahead and start our server up so node c o n whoops and then there we go cannot find module connect npm install connect go ahead and do npm install connect and then I can do node connect test connect you, you don't have it yet so you're just gonna type out the whole thing yeah there you go oh and I can't get it because I'm not online that's okay I'm pretty sure I've got it in another project here whoa holy junk that's a lot of stuff um, okay let's Okay, I know that in media box under example under node modules, I happen to already have connect. Except maybe it's just under there we go. And it's gonna complain. I'm gonna make their node modules. Life sucks when you don't have internet. But it's okay, we can work around it. So uh, what I did there was the equivalent of doing npm install connect except that I can't get my internet working right now and it looks like you you what did you do on NPM NPM install connect. Connect. okay you're gonna have to sudo it because yeah well it's just yours is messed up well no you shouldn't sudo it here we'll fix it for real do this do chone who am I do chone dash r who am I colon who no no not not colon just yeah just chone dash r backtick which is the tilde character up at the by the escape key who am I tilde and then dot npm slash and that will fix yours at some point you did a sudo install something and it messed things up a little bit so what does this do uh, so first of all you have to use backticks not quotes so control C cancel out 
Control Z. Okay, hit up. All right, and get rid of the quote and put a back tick. Yes, good. Okay, um, and you're gonna need to sudo that actually. <laughs> All right. So, cause you have, you've got some permission issues on yours. Okay, good, type in your password, hit enter. Should just take a second, good. Now you should be able to do npm install and it should work for you. So hit up, yep, hit enter. Boom, boom, boom. Still don't work. Oh, okay, and the other thing that you need to do is rumruff tilde slash temp. Okay, and sudo that. Boom. I'll do it too, even though I don't need to. But yeah, you just had some e access errors because at some point you did a sudo npm install when you probably intended to do a sudo npm install dash g. Um, and then while we're at it, fixing these permission errors, go ahead and do that to usr local as well. So, yeah, just slash usr slash local slash. And then you won't have to do it when you, oh, and it needs to be sudo. And then you won't have to do it when you um, are uh, npm installing, npm install dash g won't, won't need you to have your permissions um, set weird either. So now everything should be as it should be. Anyway, so now I can do node connect test. So I've got the server running. It's on port 4000. You should do the same. Just hit tab. You type too much. Hit tab. Thank you. Number one reason for typos is typing. Don't type, you won't have typos. Okay, cool. So, great. So now uh, the default response I get is the error handler. And if I look over here, I see git slash, and then I see git favicon. So the slash was handled by the error handler. The favicon was handled by connects built-in favicon module. Now you can see there's a favicon right here. So we know that's working. Okay, and now I'm going to go to slash hello. Mm, okay, the static module is set wrong. I know what I need to do to fix it. The new static module has some security stuff where it doesn't like it when you put in dots in the path name. So what I have to do instead is do dir name. Should I be doing that too? Yeah, change it, change it from dot slash to dir name. And dir name <gasps> means the current directory. So it's in this case, it happens to be the same thing as dot slash because we're running it from the current directory. Um, this is actually more correct than what I had put previously. So yeah, just replace the dot slash with dir name. It's kind of smart what Connect is doing. It's basically preventing you from accidentally allowing access to a folder that you don't mean to because if you just put dot slash then if you run it from a different directory, then it's going to serve up that different directory and normally that would be a security vulnerability because like if you run this file from um, the root of your hard drive, you don't want people to have access to everything on your hard drive. That's probably not what you intended to do. And so it's just kind of protecting you from that. Okay, no quotes, just dir name. Dir name, underscore, underscore, dir name is a special variable that's uh, part of node. And it's just saying that it's the name of the directory where we are. So I'll just console.log it so you can see. I'll put it in the, um, here in the on listen. Serving directory. There we go. And don't, don't even just, just, for the sake of progressing, just skip logging that out. I'm just logging it out so you can see it. It's not really necessary. But so this is the directory that we're in. And really, if I was doing this right, I should have created like 
a directory called connect test and then put all that stuff in there but I just control C that I'm not going to do it right now um, oops so node connect test um, again I'm going to go back here there we go so now if I do hello I see the time if I do the root I see the error message if I do hello slash blah let's see what it does okay yeah so it handles everything that is under hello that's what I thought it would so if we do slash error cannot get error now let's say we want to do a file like the name of our file is connect test.js so you can go ahead and get that and the static module will be like oh that's a file I can find that file I'll give you that file Ta-da! So now you've got a web server that you've written in Node that does fun things that a web server does. So if we wanted to go a little bit further with this, the next step, and then we'll be done because I don't want to take forever on this today. We'll have to you know, do another small section another day. Um, but I'll just go ahead and do path.join dir name with um, public and then I'm just going to need to require path up here at the top so did path equals require path I'll let you catch up for a second thanks the path module so the path module just is path manipulation so it's going to when it joins together dir name and then public um, oh and then I would actually have to change that again up here I'm just gonna get rid of this line you can leave it it's fine um, oh uh, I'll put it in there I'll just put it in path.join um, what join does is like what we've been doing we've been using operating systems this entire time but sometimes when you use the Windows virus instead of a path having a slash in it that's forward it's backwards and then that means backward slash means something different in a programming language um, so what you end up having to do is use path.join so that whether you're using an operating system or you're using Windows it can still know where you're trying to get to because Windows slashes are backwards and sometimes they're forwards but sometimes they're backwards and sometimes they begin with C colon but sometimes they just begin with slash so like Windows is extremely super complicated and the path.join just manages that for you so that if you want your program to run on Windows I don't know why you'd want that but if you want your program to run on Windows um, that it can run on Windows and it'll just figure out what it's supposed to do to make the path work on Windows whereas in a lot of tutorials you'll just see people using plus slash plus which is what you need to do for any operating system but Windows is different anyway so uh, now I'm running this and I'm now you can see that it's it's only gonna look in public so if I create a directory called public because right now that oh it does exist okay cool oh it's a different thing now I'm gonna move all of this stuff let's see connect test.js into connect test and then um, node modules into connect test and then oops ah too much stuff all right let's see if this works yes all right great so I need to make a directory public and then inside of this directory public I can make um, an index.html and then actually I'm not going to do that because that's too much work I'll make an index.jade and then I'll do HTML and body whoops and head and body and h1 hello world and then paragraph welcome to my index and then I'll just run jade on that so it creates the html file now I'll run my connect test and if I go to just slash now it's reading that file index.html with the static server. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right, we're done.
right. Any questions? No. Well, okay. are you posting this in? Yeah, I'm going to post this on YouTube right now. Okay. Well, as soon as the internet comes back. <laughs> All right. All right. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.